So Alan Watts said that the only Zen you find on top of the mountains is the Zen that you bring up there. And the reason I love that quote so much is because what he is saying is that like spirituality is not about trying to achieve or attain or earn something. There is nothing you can do to get whatever it is you're seeking. Why? Because you already have it. And that's the essence of Zen. Zen is not about trying to attain. It's not about trying to figure it out and, you know, earn some kind of spiritual status or enlightenment. It's about realizing, it's about waking up to the truth of your essence, your Buddha nature, or the true self, or the Christ in you. There's so many different names for it, and it's all pointing to the same thing. It's, it's who we really are, our true self, our true nature. And the mindset that so many of us grew up with, especially if we were raised in some kind of like fundamentalist religion, is the starting point is that we are sinful, we are separated from God, we are broken, there's something off, there's something wrong with us, and so we have to do something. We have to pray, we have to say this prayer, we have to confess, we have to repent, we have to go to church, we have to... There's all these different rules that, and commandments that we have to follow and adhere to in order to somehow experience some kind of spiritual regeneration so that we can then be okay. It's very dogmatic, and with any kind of fundamentalism, there's always going to be these different doctrines that, again, you must believe in this, you must, you must confess this, and when this happens, then you'll get it, then you'll attain it. But it's not like that in Zen. And really with all the different mystical traditions, it's, it's, it's the same thing. It's, it's the same thing as in Zen. Like, it's not about trying to get it. You can't get it because the moment of awakening, the moment of self-realization is when you see, when you realize that what you've been seeking, what you've been search, searching for is what you've always had. It is the the truest essence of your being. And when I left Christian fundamentalism, I was, right after my spiritual awakening, I was immediately drawn to Zen, Zen Buddhism, because the fascinating thing about Zen is that Zen is not a doctrine. It's not a concept. It's not something that you believe in. And all of my life, I was raised in Christian fundamentalism, which is like completely centered around dogma and all these different doctrines. And there's so many different denominations, and they're all trying to interpret the Bible differently, and that creates all this kind, all this division. And it just becomes really confusing. And there's a lot of fear and shame attached to a lot of these doctrines. If you don't believe in this, then you're going to hell. Or if you don't do this, then you're always going to be a sinner and separated from God. And so that's, that's the kind of stuff that I, I grew up in. And then I, I went to a Christian school, high school, and then I, I went to college and I got a bachelor's degree in ministry and theology. So I studied this stuff out and it really was a, a big part of my life. It was, it was who I was. And so when I let go of all that, when I had my awakening and I was trying to figure out like, okay, what, what's my path going to be? What am I going to join a new religion? Am I not going to be spiritual at all? Like, where do I go from here? Uh, that's when Zen, that's when I started looking into Zen, studying Zen. And yeah, it just, it was so fascinating and it was so liberating for me because the, the essence of Zen is that there is no, there's nothing you can do. It's not about doing. And it's not about not doing. Because you see, some, some spirituality, some religions will say, you know, you can attain it by not doing something. By, it, it, it really, it's the same thing. Like, it's doing versus not doing in order to get something is the same mindset. It's the same approach. But, with Zen and with other mystical traditions from other uh, religions, the heart of it is waking up. It's realizing that 
right here in the present moment, which the present moment is all that there is, the eternal now, you already have it. Your true nature, your true essence, is what you've been searching for externally, and it's actually within you, and it's always here, and it's eternal. So there's a Zen koan that says, show me your original face, the face you had before your parents were born. What does that mean? Your original face is the true self. It's who you really are. And, and this self is beyond the body and the mind, like I've talked about in previous videos. And it's eternal, meaning it has no beginning and it has no end. So when the body dies, it continues because it's ever-present. It's outside of time. And through the practice of Zen, we can actually transcend the analytical mind and we can experience our true nature and we can live from our true nature. And that's when life really becomes beautiful because it, it, does, it, it really does have a tremendous impact on how we view the world around us. So what Zen does, what, what meditation can do, is it the, the, the essence of it is that it brings you beyond your analytical mind. Now, most of us are living from our minds the majority of the time. As soon as we, as soon as we wake up in the morning until we go to sleep at night, all throughout the day, we're just listening to these like continuous streams of thoughts that are running through our heads we're listening to the voice in the head and most of the time we're allowing these thoughts we're allowing these different emotions and feelings and the voice the continuous mental chatter to really control and dictate our lives and what the practice of zen does is zen the, the, the point of Zen is to bring you into a place where you can go throughout your day. Now, before I say that, let me just say this. The mind, the analytical mind, is important. We need it to live here on Earth. We need it to make decisions. We need it to work. We need it to solve problems. We need it to type, to write, to do all these different things, right? But we're not supposed to be living in the mind, in the analytical mind all day long. And if we're living in the mind all day long, that's when overthinking happens. And overthinking is what causes all of our anxiety and, you know, most of our fear and all these different negative emotions. So what, what Zen does is Zen allows you to take a step back and you, through meditation, you transcend the analytical mind and what you discover is that behind the mind, behind the continuous stream of thoughts, there's this, this emptiness. And emptiness doesn't necessarily mean nothingness. It's just this pure, open awareness. It's consciousness. And it's not, it's intelligent. So it's not like it's just this meaningless, like, spaceless nothingness and that's what I'm trying to say and a lot of this stuff is hard to it's hard to put into words because most of it is beyond words but you enter into this space where you just become completely conscious of what you're doing in the present moment and you just do that so you know a lot of the Zen practices and the meditations they're very very simple and there's walking meditation, there's standing meditation, there's sitting meditation, there's lying meditation. And the point of these practices in Zen is to teach you how to go about your day and do these, these normal things that we do every day. But while you're doing it, so let's, say, let's just say washing dishes, for example. While you're washing dishes, you're washing the dishes. You're just completely present conscious in the moment and the eternal now and you're just doing the dishes and you know most people would be like well washing dishes is not spiritual like how is that some kind of meditation or how is that some kind of spiritual practice and it is if you're doing the dishes 
and you're just focused and you're just conscious of doing the dishes. But the the thing about it is when for most of us when we're washing the dishes we're not there we're we're in our minds and we're thinking about all these other things right like okay what do i have to do tomorrow and what what am i going to cook tomorrow and what about that appointment and i've I've got to do this and that and the other and so we're not there we're not in the present moment we're completely in a we're in a different place we're we're in our we're in our headspace and again the, we we were not we were not designed we're not meant to be in the headspace in the analytical mind all the time there's a time for it there's there's a uh it becomes necessary during certain times throughout the day but we're not supposed to be there all the time and when we are living from our minds all of the time we start creating all these different mental constructs and we see the world we see other people through these constructs and the truth of it is that how we are viewing and perceiving ourselves and the world around us through these mental constructs because we're in our headspace all the time is giving us a false perception of what life really is it's giving us a false perception of what reality really is and so when you can just sit here and and look at the trees and and just observe nature without the mind having to like be this little commentary on this is this and this is that so part of the analytical mind part of living in your headspace what you'll notice is that the mind is always trying to label and judge and attach but if you can just sit there and observe a tree like I'm doing right now and I'm just observing it and I'm I'm not trying to label it I'm not trying to categorize it because think about it every name that we have every label that we have every category that we have is something that is generated from the mind but if we go beyond the mind into that space of just the witness of just pure awareness and we start to look around at the world what we'll see is that reality in and of itself or the reality that that we can perceive through our five senses is much more complex and it's 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 beyond these mental constructs that we have formed and most of the time these mental constructs that we that we form are what limitless limit us in life they prevent us from really the the beauty and the the peace and the the yeah just the reality of what life is all about and so most of our anxiety, most of our worry, most of our fear that we experience is unnecessary. It's coming from the mind. And so the suffering, most of the suffering that we experience, we bring it on to ourselves. I mean, think about how many times in your life that you've spent so much time, maybe days, maybe weeks, maybe months, worrying about something, anxious about something, and then come to find out whatever it is you were stressed about, worrying about, it it never happened or it wasn't true. And then you look back and you're like, okay, I just spent six months worrying about this and it wasn't even true or it never happened. Yet I suffered. I, I went through all these sleepless nights and I was full of anxiety and stress and it was for nothing because it didn't happen. There's another quote by Alan Watts where he says something like, no amount of worry ever changed anything or it never changed like how something was going to be. So really all worry is pointless, it's meaningless, and it only brings us unnecessary suffering. So that's just something to to think about. But anyways, that's why I was drawn to Zen and, and... when I started practicing Zen, I noticed um, amazing differences in my life uh, that that came rather quickly. You know, the more I 
the more I practiced it and the more I meditated on a, on a daily basis. And a lot of it was letting go. A lot of it was unlearning. The more I let go, the more I stopped trying to build up all this kind of intellectual knowledge and the more I stopped trying to figure, it, figure everything out, the more I realized that there really, there is this peace, there is this divine intelligence, this consciousness that is beyond, that is sitting behind my analytical mind. And if I can get into that space on a daily basis and then learn how to live from there, then it is going to tremendously transform my life. And it has, like I said. So, mo most of it, so much of, so much of spirituality, especially from the myst mystical and the con contemplative branches of these different traditions, is so simple. It really is. It's not complicated. We make it complicated because we're living in our headspace. We're living in the mind all the time. But if we can just move beyond the mind, get into that heart space, get into that sacred stillness, and recognize that all there is is this present moment, the past and future don't exist. And in what, you'll, what you'll notice about the mind is that it's always focused on either the past or the future. It's never in the now. It's never in the present moment. But again, the past and future don't exist. So why are we spending so much time there in our minds instead of being here, now, in the present moment? Because this moment, this eternal now, is all that there is. And you'll find a tremendous amount of peace and joy and happiness and love in this moment in the eternal now and it's not about getting there you can't get there you can only be there so through meditation you're not trying to get that th this is such a big misconception so many people are meditating in order to try to get into these higher realms or dimensions or these higher states of consciousness and the reality of it is that you're already there you, you are there right now it is this moment it's right here right now but what's preventing you from experiencing it is the mind and being fixated on either the past or the future so come into the present moment be here now and awaken to your true nature it's always been there. It's always been right here, right now. And it's not going anywhere. And when you live from this place of being, what you realize, what you discover, is that this new world that you're searching for, that you're hoping will come to pass in the future, is right here at hand in the now so that's it for today uh, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time